Firehouse Tales. Okay, these two scandals I may have witnessed part of one of these personally and the second scandal is just too good a story. I have to include it. Uh, I've heard it from multiple people and uh, each time I hear it it kind of corroborates what I heard before so I believe these stories are true uh, I wouldn't swear in court <laughs> that everything I tell you happened exactly as I tell it uh, but these are two really good stories and uh, the general theme of these stories I believe is something that's very very true uh, some of the details may not have happened exactly as I relate it. Okay, the first story. There were seven fire stations, okay, uh, in my city when I was a firefighter. And uh, this story happened when I was a driver. So I knew the driver very well that may have experienced this. Okay, whenever there's a big fire, a lot of fire engines go. And if the fire engine that's protecting the hospital and a really affluent part of town, kind of the, the high-end taxpayers, if that fire station is emptied, they take a fire station from the rural part of the city, from poor taxpayers, and they move that fire engine and that crew to this fire station. That's part of some kind of informal deal or it could be a formal deal that the city had set up with the hospital as well as a, a sense of obligation to the people that pay more taxes to always have that fire station manned if possible. So this fire crew went from the rural station to the station close to the hospital in the affluent part of town just to stand by there for a few hours while that fire crew along with several others was fighting a big fire it, it was a pretty big fire so they get to the fire, fire station and they've got keys every fire truck has keys to all the different fire stations specifically because of situations like this so the officer gets the keys and hops out of the truck and walks over to the front door of the fire station and he can't open it and he's struggling visibly with this door. And the driver is curious about what's going on. The firefighter can't really see from his vantage point. So the officer comes back and opens the door. And he has a really funny expression on his face. And he looks up and says, There's a mattress and a half-naked, unconscious woman blocking the door. And the driver immediately grabs the radio and says, Should I call EMS or police? And the officer says, no, 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 don't call anybody, don't call anybody. Let, 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 me, let me figure this out. And so he goes back and forces his way in, and he can't wake the woman up. <laughs> he, he can't wake the woman up. So uh, it turns out she's drunk. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure exactly if the fire crew all went inside or only the officer did. But I know that uh, after uh, a few minutes of this uh, kind of confrontation with this half-naked, completely unresponsive but alive woman, uh, they were called to the fire scene. So they had to leave. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what happened, okay? But later on down the road, okay, later on, uh, this officer tried to write up for disciplinary reasons the officer of that fire station because it turns out that that officer had been inviting uh, women to the fire station and drinking beer with them and smoking cigarettes with them and having relations with them and he's a married man okay so he's not supposed to be doing that because he's married He's not supposed to be doing it because it's a workplace. <laughs> it's it's not it's not a, a bar, you know. It's not a cantina or some kind of house of ill repute or something. So 
it's pretty serious what happened. Well, nothing happens to this guy. Nothing happens. The chief just buries it all. So this officer is not a very friendly officer, not a very nice guy. And he knows that, uh, that this other officer is trying to get him into trouble. And he's just bragging that nothing's going to happen because he knows people. So the officer uh, that's uh, trying to discipline him, uh, the good guy officer, skips the chain of command and goes directly to City Hall and complains. And the chief suspends him for that, suspends him without pay for three days, I think. It was two shifts, or maybe it was three shifts, I forget. But a significant amount of time. It's, it ends up being, you know, like uh, uh, almost a week suspension. Uh, okay, then after that, the bad guy officer, by the way, ends up losing his job. Not because of this incident. He loses his job because of insurance fraud. Because he claims a back injury years later. And is seen working at a construction site as a foreman. Which was his, his part-time job on his off days. He was working as a foreman on a construction site. When he's supposedly uh, sick with a back injury. On injury leave. Workman's comp. So he ends up losing his job because of that. Okay, but nothing happens to this guy because of this. So later on down the road, okay, skip ahead another year, maybe a little more. And the city is having a, a sexual harassment class. Now these are done periodically in every municipality I've known. And they're done by outside consultants who come around, tour around and kind of give these presentations on behalf of uh, your human resources department, okay? And, the, and they make sure everybody knows their rights. So if you're being harassed, sexually harassed, okay, and during this, this lecture, okay, this is on duty, we're all in our dress uniforms, all the firefighters. There's also police there. There's also uh, the water department okay the uh, human resources the people that work at city hall parks and recreation sanitation you get the idea right it's a big classroom almost like a college lecture hall and they're they're giving a presentation well one of the firefighters stands up and he says i have a question and the guy says yes and he says suppose i'm a firefighter suppose my officer at the fire station is inviting women over and having sex with them and forcing us to be quiet about it and not say anything or he threatens us you're going to be in trouble if you say anything about this suppose he's drinking on the on the job site in, in our fire stations smoking and suppose we find this really offensive and uh, the 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 man the consultant says well you report this right away to your chief and the firefighter stands up again and says, suppose we report it to our chief and suppose we're suspended. Or no, he says, uh, suppose we report it to the chief and nothing happens. And then he says, well, then you go to human resources. You let us know. And he says, suppose you go to human resources and you're suspended without pay. And the guy's kind of confused and he says, um, are you talking about a specific incident or is this hypothetical? And the firefighter starts to lose his his composure and completely loses control of his emotions. He starts pounding on the table and he starts shouting, This is happening right now! <laughs> and the lecturer just doesn't know what to do. And all these people in suits and people from sanitation and from the police department are turning around looking, staring. And the human resources director, who's office is just right around the corner from this lecture hall comes rushing in and says what on earth is happening in here and he says well this gentleman with the fire department says that that this situation is happening and she says well we're going to look into this just forget the rest of the class for now and it was seven years after that 
before we had another sexual harassment class. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay. That's one fun scandal story, okay? The second scandal story is just a really funny story about human psychology, I think. Okay. There's a teacher. A former teacher. A guy who used to be a teacher becomes a firefighter. I actually knew several of these people, okay? Teaching is a really difficult, emotionally draining job. And the fire department, when you get off, you don't have any take-home work. There's nothing you need to do. There's no homework. <laughs> it's all your time. The moment you're off duty, it's all free time. That's revolutionary to a teacher. It's unbelievable how, how liberating that feeling is. Anyway, so I knew several of these teachers, okay? Now, this one teacher was really good at making tests, okay? So what he does is he makes tests for himself. He goes through all the source material. There's a lot of textbooks in the fire department. There's uh, building construction methods and materials. There's uh, officer uh, management books. There's books on uh, pumping apparatus and uh, hydraulic calculations, how to calculate how much water is flowing through, what diameter hose, under what pressure, back pressure, and volume of, of water flowing, and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of different books. Uh, communications using the radio, uh, the emergency management system, incident management system, so uh, if, if you have a big emergency like those California wildfires, you have all these different agencies working together. How do you organize it? A lot of different textbooks, okay? So this guy goes through all these textbooks. Every station has a library of all the source material for, for promotional exams. He goes through all these books in his spare time, and he makes questions for himself out of these books, test questions. And then he types these up, into these randomly placed uh, tests. So each test will have 15 questions from the pumping apparatus book. Each test will have 25 questions from the officer's management book. Each test will have uh, 15 questions about ladders. Okay, and on and on and on. Okay. So he ends up with these 100 word tests. And before he studies for a promotional exam. The promotional exam will come out, let's say, on August 30th will be the day of the promotional exam at 9 a.m. at such and such a building in, near City Hall, okay? And in order to uh, prepare for this exam, you need to study these eight books. So he'll look through those eight books and he'll pull out all these study questions he had for these eight books and he'll make practice tests for himself. And he'll take one right off the bat and this practice test will show him, okay, I got 100% of the questions right. These random questions from this text, I'm not going to study it. I only got 15% of the questions right from this text. I need to study this one. I got 40% of the questions right from this text, but all of them were from these three chapters. So I'm going to study only these seven chapters of this book. You see, that's, that's the way he used this test was to guide himself on where he needed to study. And it really worked. So he shared this with anybody who wanted help on the exam. Now you would think that because these are competitive exams and the top two guys, or women, you know, the top two firefighters on this exam are likely to get promoted and everybody else will have to wait till next year. You'd think that guys would... would keep these kind of things close to their chest, keep it secret. But actually, it's, it's the exact opposite. Firefighters are always helping each other all the time, and it's a problem during these tests, keeping guys from helping other people on difficult parts of the test. The uh, proctor, the, the examiner for these exams, really has a hard time keeping guys from talking to each other and separating them. So, anyway, this guy shared these tests with anybody. Okay, so somebody 
hears that he has a test and he looks at the test but he only looks at it for maybe eight seconds okay he sees the test he goes through the test and he sees that there's 100 questions well there's 100 questions on the actual test so he thinks that this guy is getting these tests from City Hall and he's studying them and that's why he's he's gotten promoted okay that's cheating okay and that's like a scandal so this gets blown way out of proportion and there are investigators that come I forget if they were from Austin but they were definitely from outside the city investigators came to investigate this they thought that there was a real serious problem and they were talking about firing people if if it was true uh, the uh, human resources woman who did the tests was just in tears about this and this scandal went on for months because the teacher who actually made these tests was very open and honest about what these tests were and he showed them to whoever wanted to see it look this is what these tests are and the assist one of the assistant chiefs went over this test that that he had and he said wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute 18 of these questions are on the test well of course you know if you go through the the books there's only so many questions you can make tests uh, tests from you know and a lot of these books have review questions at the end of the chapter and so he would just copy these down well that's what the human resources lady did also so of course you're gonna have identical questions popping up so that got blown out of proportion and finally the teacher himself had to go in front of this 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 board of examiners or investigators or whatever and and swear like an affidavit about what it was and he had prepared like a four page long single spaced statement that he wanted read into the record and what it was was exactly what happened from beginning to end you know and the interesting thing is is he had gone back and he said look this test that I scored I think it was like an 84 he scored an 84 in this test he said go back through all my Academy tests go back through my previous promotional exams because I kept track in the Academy and I have a little post-it card that stuck to my map book and it reminds me that my average throughout the Academy was 83.9 on all my exams my previous promotional exams were all 80 something this is how I do on exams and he had college transcripts and he showed that his grade point average in college was like 86 <laughs> so he had this long history of scoring exactly that score and then he brought up something that immediately closed the investigation and the investigators went home. He brought up the fact that there's two other guys who had gotten promoted within the past few years that had scored in the 90s. One got a 99 and one got a 97. And these guys both averaged 70s through the academy. They struggled to pass. They got 70s on the state exam. They got 70s in the previous promotional exams, and neither of them had done well in college. But they got a 99 and a 97. And he put in there at the very end that if you're going to talk about people getting an exam and cheating for promotional exams, you need to just turn your heads away from me because there's nothing there. But you might look at these two guys. But those two guys were the darling of the department. And the chief didn't want anything about that. And City Hall didn't want anything about that because there might have been like a, a racial thing that could have been brought up. And so everything just disappeared. The guys packed up their books and left. And the, uh, the teacher in question that had, <laughs> with the practice exams, continued making these practice exams and sharing them and he had a nice little written apology 
that one of the investigators had actually given him that uh, he's sorry that this thing had ever gone so far and it was ridiculous and uh, it, it was really interesting time in uh, in that department <laughs> and the funny thing is you could see people dividing up people were dividing up the the pro teacher team and the anti teacher team and it was just funny you know and the guy who who really started spreading the rumor the guy who'd only looked at the exam for about 8 seconds and said hey this is from this is from human resources he's getting he's getting exams that guy and the teacher were actually best friends and remained best friends as a matter of fact that guy almost married the teacher's sister Anyway, funny, funny stories. And uh, people outside the department really thought that there's like a civil war going on. But actually, inside the department, everybody stayed pretty close. Because in reality, <laughs> there, there was nothing happening. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, take care. Have a good day.